Hi there, welcome to another episode of What the Word. Good to have you with us, uh, where we're just seeking to read God's Word and then live it out day by day. And really want to encourage you to read along with the passage this morning. So we're, we've got a, a bit of a section of scripture to read from Mark 5 this morning, reading from verse 1. So you can read along in the uh, description box below this video. Really encourage you to read along. Um, or you can obviously open your Bibles and read that way. Uh, so we're going to get cracking. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. It said, They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When Jesus saw, uh, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in the, his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, go home and... Uh, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell the, uh, in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were amazed. OK, so <clears throat> a lot to get through here. But just to say, uh, to start with, um, it says they went ac across the lake to the other side, OK, to the region of the Gerasenes, OK, um, where they got out the boat and actually that region was a Gentile region and that's really important just to understand in this section because Jesus is basically saying look um, I have authority even in a Gentile area okay yeah in this area where actually the odds were kind of stacked against Jesus okay he'd been ministering really amongst his own people and uh, in the synagogues and, you know, Jewish people around him. But here's a Gentile region where the odds are kind of stacked against him. And um, we learn, don't we, that actually it's a Gentile area, which which would have been unclean. OK, it, um, uh, the uh, they were pig farmers. OK, which meant they were unclean. OK, pigs were unclean animals. This demon possessed guy lived amongst the tombs which also was an unclean thing according to, to Jewish Old Testament uh, rules and law and regulation. And this man cut himself as well with stones. And so he was unclean. And so Jesus is just demonstrating that to the disciples that even in this, this different territory, okay, this different almost uh, land almost, that, that he is still Lord. That there's no territory on earth where his authority doesn't tarry, okay? Where his authority does not apply that he is Lord and and we see him don't we cast out these demons from this man who is possessed by uh, by many demons it says it says my name is legion for we are many there's many demons oppressing this man and Jesus gets rid of them all no one else has been able to solve this problem they've been trying to tie this man up <laughs> trying to bind him and he just breaks free and he's this kind of right roaming wild beast but Jesus comes and sets him free and he's just showing his disciples that the authority that he has is not just in the Jewish uh, arena it is in the gen it's to the Gentiles too and um, and we see this man is is healed don't we and 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 is delivered from these demons um but I think the question that often people ask about this passage is well 
but what about the pigs? Okay, poor, poor pigs. Okay, why, why did the demons have to go into pigs? And um, often that's the question that comes out of the of this section because we, we we see that that the um, the demons ask, what, "Don't send us from this place, Jesus, but send us into those pigs." And so Jesus permits that to happen, and then we find the pigs just uh, basically run off a cliff and and die. And 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 the question is, well, what why? What about the pigs? Why did Jesus allow that to happen? And I think um, a number of things, just to comment on that, a number of things I think we can learn. Uh, firstly, uh, the demon's job is destruction. OK, that's what demons do. OK, they, they, they're destructive. They want to destroy. Uh, Jesus says elsewhere, the thief comes to steal and destroy. And, and, and that's what the devil does. He wants to bring destruction. And so letting these demons loose on the pigs, they they if they can't do it to the man, they're going to do, do it to the pigs. Um, but it's worth noting that these pigs were, um, they were destined, they were being farmed to be eaten anyway, okay? Because it's a Gentile area, okay? Um, and so these pigs were destined for the slaughterhouse anyway. Uh, and so, you know, in one sense, it doesn't make an awful lot of difference to the pigs. And that's just worth bearing in mind. They weren't going to live a, a long, happy life, these pigs. They were destined to be eaten. Um, but I think that the main point, um, I think, is, is that actually it reveals our hearts and it reveals the hearts of the people in the story, which can be a reflection of our heart. Because what we find from the people in the story is they come back and they see what's happened and they're kind of afraid. And probably they're thinking, this is a this is this is this has cost us okay yeah they see the man and he's there and he's healed but the pigs are gone and it says they plead with Jesus to go they ask him to leave the area and um yeah they began to plead with Jesus to leave their their region and um it strikes me that perhaps these guys were more concerned about their property and their profits than they were this person that was now healed and set free in front of them. And they asked Jesus to go. And I, I think it's just quite revealing, isn't it? The human heart that, OK, this person is set free. This person is restored. But it's it's been very costly to us. We've lost out on our property. We've lost out on our profits here. The money we could have made from this these pigs. And actually, we would we would prefer actually Jesus if he didn't do this kind of stuff because it it costs us. And and I wonder if that actually is really the point, that we can be far too more concerned with our property, with our programmes and with our profits than we are people. And Jesus is, you know, he is concerned about people. That's his heart. He loves people and he's not so concerned about the other stuff. And, and we, we need to allow that to affect us and we need to allow that to to change our hearts, because I know that I can sometimes be like that. I don't know about you, but I know that I can certainly spot that in me at times. And I just want to uh, let's take the opportunity today just to ask for the Holy Spirit's help. Perhaps read the passage again, turn it into prayer and ask for the Holy Spirit's help that we would be a, we would be uh, people that are concerned and love people over and above our property and about the profits that we might be making okay so just encourage you to take a moment to do that and to and to go out and to love people okay have a great day